Hello and welcome to everybody who's joined us so far. We will be getting started in just a moment's time. Okay, everybody, uh, it's just gone five o'clock, so we will get started. Uh, really, really excited about the uh, FNS 40217 Certificate for in Accounting and Bookkeeping. Uh, it really, truly is an exciting course and it's really exciting cohort. And uh, we always get a lot of uh, you know, prospective and potential students attending this session. So it's uh, really, really exciting to be uh, having a bit of a chat with you all tonight. Uh, accompanying me, I have um, our Chief Academic Officer, uh, Iona McKimmy. Iona, welcome. Hi, James. Thank you. It's great to be here. Excellent. And uh, the founder of Venture Education, Dr. Mark Sinclair, welcome. <laughs> Hello, Iona. Hi, James. Great to, <laughs> glad to be here. Hi. Now, uh, look, I'll just signpost tonight's um, presentation or session a little bit for everybody out there. What we'll do is we'll um, go through the course, um, the course outline, <laughs> We'll talk about some of the applications of the course, the job prospects, what it might apply to. We'll touch on online learning, um, what the online learning experience looks like and feels like with Mentor. Um, we'll delve into assessments. Now I'm going to save that you know, probably a little bit towards the end because I know that's what you're all interested in. We'll also address some frequently asked questions. And of course, if anything comes to mind uh, throughout tonight's presentation, what I'd encourage you to do is use the chat function, type a question to me, and what I will do is uh, put that to the panel on your behalf. Uh, if we don't uh, answer that, say, in the frequently asked questions or in the content throughout. Okay, <laughs> so certainly feel free to reach out to me and engage that way. Now, without further ado, let's get underway. Um, Iona, I'm going to hand on over to you first to talk to us a little bit about the course itself and provide an overview um, on who it might apply to, what some of the outcomes are, and perhaps some of the software that we might be exposed to as well. Um, the Certificate for in Accounting and Bookkeeping is um, truly a, um, I, I suppose we'd consider it to be one of our flagship courses here at Mentor Education. Um, one of the things we like to do is focusing on building students' capacity and capability. So they're ready to step into the workplace or they might already be in the workplace. So they're ready to take on more responsibility and a broader range of duties. And we, in, in this course especially, we do a lot of work with the software. So the, the course itself includes a really broad range of bookkeeping and accounting skills. Um, and it ranges from everything from preparing financial reports for small entities to um, corporate clients to um, creation and lodging of business activity um, statements uh, for GST um, lodgement for ledger administration. Um, we look at cloud computing and the different types of software as well that are available. We also have a look in that, in that aspect of the course about um, add-on um, tools that we can use with our accounting software to increase our reporting capacity or our, um, analy and our analytics. Um, we look at utilising dashboards and how to use dashboards to present information in our accounting system. But we also drill down into those everyday transactional tasks that we do as accountants and bookkeepers. So creation of invoices, purchase orders, managing an inventory, um, reconciliations, because reconciliation is part of, you know, one of our main things that we, we really need to know how to do so we know we've got it all right. Um, so there's a whole range of um, accounting and, and bookkeeping skills that we look at. Um, we also look at communication as a bookkeeper and our um, and the environments that we work in. So we look at um, excuse me ethics and compliance from the perspective of say an accountancy practice or as a, um, a as a small business owner that works as a, a bookkeeping and accountant um, accounting consultant. So we look at a range of different things across the course and in the context of accounting and bookkeeping. And we also utilise throughout the course NYIB. So we do that in a hands-on way. 
um, and there's a lot of practical activities where students actually utilize the software in most units in the course. Um, so as students pass out of the course, they, they're confident that um, they can move into a working role or work, move into a broader working role, um, even work with their own clients if they want to, um, excuse me, and, and feel confident using software to create so accounting solutions for their clients. Um, the main outcome of this course is um, a nationally uh, um, recognised accounting and bookkeeping qualification, which is a certificate for in accounting and bookkeeping. Um, excuse me. And <coughs> um, excuse me. the units um, that are required for registration as a BAS agent with the Tax Practitioner Board are also delivered, delivered in this course um, and another higher course in Diploma of Accounting. So, the other thing that um, we also um, encourage students to do is work through um, by utilising MyOB, by doing the additional um, um, education opportunities that are available as MyOB users. Um, they develop a, a true familiarity with the system and a confidence with the system, but they can also then go on and complete, uh, as they pass out of the course, their true MyOB accreditations as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, Mark, handing on over to you, just talking to us a little bit about perhaps the course outcomes and, and the value of formalised qualifications. I mean, certainly with your broad business background and the role that, I suppose, bookkeeping and accounting plays uh, in all businesses. I mean, what sort of demands um, I mean, have you witnessed, I suppose, in, in your experience working with a whole range of businesses? Okay, we've just lost Mark there for a second. We'll come back to that question. Uh, but in the, in, the, in the meantime, I know I'm going to put you on the spot again and come back to you um, to talk to us a little bit about perhaps the specific subjects inside the course itself. So let's delve into the course outline, um, some of the units that are involved, and also some of the reasoning behind the units being in there as well. Okay, so what I want us to do is I want us to think about um, we're, we're sitting in a business and it's our job to actually be the bookkeeper or the, be the accountant for the business. So each one of the units that are in the course are, are literally, um, they literally relate to a different aspect of that role sitting in that chair doing that job. So every week, month, some, some businesses create day-end reports, for example. Um, we look at sales reports. There's so many different types of reports that we can create. So we look at sales reports. We might do an inventory report for reordering inventory. Then we have our, um, our weekly and our monthly reports. So we produce a, a profit and loss and a balance sheet and a trial balance and so on and so forth. And then quarterly or monthly, depending on the, on the business. Um, We'd lodge our, our business activity statement with the ATO and we'd do our single touch payroll re reporting as well and we do that monthly. So well, there's a whole range of reports that we generate monthly. So we look at financial reports. Cloud computing, as I mentioned before, we look at a range of different software options and how to actually choose the right software for the right business. So, for example, if we're a, um, a pharmacy, We'll have, we, want it, we want software that actually has a really robust um, inventory in it. Whereas if we're um, a, a retail shop, we'll want to know that we, 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 we can actually scan products and we actually have a product catalogue, for example. We also look at administering um, accounts and ledgers because that's where all of our accounting information is stored, all of the information about our transactions so on and so forth. So you can see by the, the, the actual course outline that we've got here on the screen that we look at of each one of the units that are in the course is actually about a specific action, um, excuse me, that we take as part of an accounting and bookkeeping role in either a small business, a medium business or working in a practice. Um, and we look at it from a number of different contexts. So students actually gain familiarity and a, and a, a, a really um, great depth of knowledge about working in their own industry and working in different contexts in their industry. Excellent. Thank you very much. 
Now, Iona, just um, going back to um, the previous slide, and we also just touched on it here as well um, with respect to um, bookkeeping systems and uh, packages. Um, we use the MyOB uh, accounting package um, throughout the course. What requirements are there for students um, with respect to the package that they need to obtain? And is there a charge attached to that? Okay, so what we actually do with this course is we provide students with this student version of MYOB. Um, and that um, and and that software that we provide to the students is free of charge. Um, so there's no additional charge for software. Um, students, of course, once they exit the course, can can um, go ahead and arrange their own subscription with their or, or their own full versions that they can load onto their computer. Um, but there is no requirement to purchase additional software and the student um, version of the software also includes payroll and the full um, capability of record, re reporting for MyOB um, and we're able to take students all the way through the steps for example for single touch payroll reporting as well as Bass Lodgement as well using that software. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, now um, the next um, bit of information that we've got up is focused on the industry itself and a job overview. And Mark, are, are you back with us? I am. I had it on mute before, so apologies. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, welcome back. Uh, look, what I'm going to do is hand on over to you to talk to us a little bit about um, the job role, okay, of somebody um, with a uh, bookkeeping and um, accounting qualification, uh, some of the jobs that it might lead to. And we've got some interesting information down there about the job outlook. Um, and one, I think, point which is really interesting to draw attention to is, um, you know, an expectation of around about 9.7% growth uh, in openings in the accounting industry over the next five years. Now, that's a really, really big number. Um, if you could perhaps also talk to some of the drivers that are behind the opportunities that are being created in this space. So mm -hmm. over to you. Well, look, it's quite interesting to see the profile of students that undertake this course. Um, there's a whole different range of roles and reasons why. Um, look, it, it, firstly, one of the biggest drivers in, in Australia is um, service roles, service growth in the service industry. Um, small business accounts for the greatest number of employment um, numbers in Australia. And it's just about every small business is looking or requires some sort of accounting and bookkeeping function within their organisation. Um, it could well be um, a small business owner, whether they've been construction, whether they've been hospitality, you name it. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the owner of the business. Quite often the, um, the partner or spouse of um, the business owner is also participating in, in a particular role. Um, so that's traditional. Um, there are, of course, roles within organisations that are specific to do with accounting and bookkeeping, um, payroll, BAS agent, account clerk. Sometimes people want to be a, um, a professional bookkeeper, providing services to other businesses. But um, my personal view is that really anyone in any professional capacity in an organisation really needs to understand the basics of accounting and bookkeeping. Um, whether you're in a large organisation, um, tasked with implementing an operational budget, setting a budget, um, even whether it's just a particular project, it's really important to account for the costs to budget going forward and the like. Um, I quite often see people in, um, you know, in executive roles in large organisations, they may well be able to read a, a balance sheet or a profit loss statement, but they don't really necessarily understand how to actually create a balance sheet or profit loss um, and really understand the line items. So, just about anyone in any professional capacity, I think, really should understand the basics and have a um, basic um, bookkeeping and accounting um, qualification under their belt. But the uh, majority of people doing this are doing it for their own business um, or they're working in the roles that are described just there, James. Now I'm on mute. Thank you very much. So, so, so certainly, I think with Australia's um, emphasis on small business, I mean, there's just such a, a broad range of opportunities out there. Something else that we also talk about, you know, particularly with um, career paths and courses that you know, courses you might choose to get into certain jobs, is the alignment with one's lifestyle and the things that are important in people's lives. And I'm going to hand on over to you, Iona, to talk to us a little bit about um, perhaps flexibility and some of their peripheral reasons, or I suppose, or other reasons why people might choose something 
um, in the bookkeeping and accounting field that might align with what's going on in their life a little bit better um, than perhaps some different types of roles. Okay, of all of the things that we can do um, in in for, for in a in an a, um, a, an employment context, um, one of the most flexible industries that work we can work in is the bookkeeping and accounting industry. Um, a lot of the work we do um, is online, um, and even more so now. Um, a lot of the work we do might be with a number of different clients at different sites. Um, but with the advent of um, our accounting software being available online, we can literally pick up our laptop as a bookkeeper and an account accountant, and we can go and sit with our client. And we might actually do that three or four times a week with three or four different clients. So one of the things that working in this industry does and, and in this context does is it provides us with not just flexibility, but it also provides us with portability. And we find that a lot of people that um, run that um, work um, in their own business, for example, or as a consultant, will often work on multiple sites, variable hours. Um, I know of one um, bookkeeping consult bookkeeper who works as a consultant in New in southern New South Wales, for example, and she works between. Um, Excuse me. Over about a 200 kilometer um, distance, with a number of different clients, um, and is often sitting at the beach with one of her clients working, so and consulting. So there's a number of different things and different contexts that we can work in. Um, with it also fits around our lifestyle. Um, we tend to find that a number of students in the course of um, or might be entering their second or third careers because they're at different different places in their life. So they might want flexibility working around partners or young children or they, they might have actually their context for their work might have changed so they might have moved from the city to um, a rural area for example or vice versa. Um, so again you know sort of the, the, the bookkeeping and accounting sector if you like provides so much flexibility um, for us as people, we can work shorter hours, longer hours, weekends, not weekends, with our own clients, with other people's clients, um, or we can just work in a role in an employment in a, in a role that we're employed into, um, in any one of a number of different roles. So, as we we've seen here, you know, so this course takes us to all sorts of places. Um, the other thing that this course will also do is it, it can actually feed into um, other sectors such as project management and managing project budgets on large projects. Um, it can feed into um, multi-site business units where we produce a number of different products on a number of different sites. So there's that flexibility there as well, James. So really, it's a great course for a really broad range of opportunities flexibility and portability. It's a really cool industry to work in. Well, uh, bookkeeping on the beach, it's good work if you can get it, that's for sure. Uh, now, talking about the breadth of application, we've just had a question come in. Um, would it be suitable for, say, the heavy vehicle transportation field? So, I mean, is this, uh, you know, accounting and bookkeeping, I mean, how, how diverse is, it at, is its application and would it be suitable for the heavy vehicle transportation field? Most definitely. The fundamentals of bookkeeping and the fundamentals of accounting are pretty much standard across just about every industry. There's always specialisations, but for heavy transport, for example, um, and for the additional reporting that you may need to do. Uh, so, for example, for um, uh, fuel and reporting against fuel and things like that, uh, yes, most definitely. We will actually, we do actually touch on that in part of the course. But the students who complete the certificate for and move into the diploma of accounting, we actually drill down um, even more, even more into those type of aspects of management accounting um, in the next level of the course. So they're introduced at this at this level in the certificate for, but in the pathway, we pay, we actually um, drill down into into that even more in the next level. Oh, memberships, student memberships. That was your next question, wasn't it, James? <laughs> it, it, it was indeed. So having the course material and the qualifications is one thing, but I think um, 
having the network in the industry now is something else. And that's where the well association memberships come in and play a very big role and something I believe you're quite passionate about and may in fact be members of both these organisations and strongly encourage all of your students to get involved. Well, I currently certainly am a member of the Institute of Public Accountants. Um, and, and I undertake my um, continuing professional education and um, my professional development for my accounting qualifications with the Institute of Public Accountants. Um, and, but first, I, I really want to talk about the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers. So as it says here on the screen, students are eligible for a student membership which is valued at $120 um, with the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers. But I, I really would like to encourage all of our students in the course. It's not mandatory, but I'd really encourage you to um, join the ICB, take advantage of the, um, the, the student membership. It provides you with access to um, a, an even broader range of materials the Good Bookkeeping Guide, which is a great quick reference material for um, for everybody as they move on out into their into their working world or their working world changes. But it also provides us with an opportunity for um, continuing professional education and continuing professional development. The ICB also participates, as does the Institute of um, public accountants with the uh, International Day of Bookkeeping that happens every year. So there's a celebration with a whole lot of additional education and involvement opportunities and you can develop your professional network. Professional networks in bookkeeping and accounting are invaluable to us. There's always that person that knows the answer to that question about the software that we're, we're using and which, which and how to create that additional report template that we're just not quite sure about doing. Um, and it's always good to um, interact with our peers and with our professional peers. So I encourage every student to take advantage of these memberships um, because it won't just, um, it doesn't just create an opportunity for resources for you. It creates the opportunity for you to begin as you're studying to develop your professional network. And a professional network, as we know, not just provides support, but it also provides us with future professional opportunities, um, additional resources, uh, specialists in different areas that you know we might not have enough knowledge of. So yes, I very, very much encourage all students to um, take advantage of the student memberships that are available to them. Excellent, thank you very much. And, and Mark, perhaps, if, I mean, in your professional experience, if you could talk to perhaps some of the benefits and advantages of being involved with industry associations. Well, look, I only touched on networking and there's, there's nothing better than really getting insights into the industry, um, opportunities, um, best way about doing something, but, um, you know, even strategically, you know, clients, marketing opportunities and things of that nature. Um, we never, as a professional, we always want to um, feel as if we've got a finger on the pulse and um, be aware of opportunities that are coming, but also industry associations lobby on our behalf, sometimes to get changes in the industry, changes in legislation for our, for our, um, our clients, whatever it might be. Um, so those events, the ability to have social interaction, to have professional development days, um, potentially to advance um, our own business, um, but also just to participate in, in lobbying government and um, in industry. There's lots of benefits. And if you're really serious about your profession, then being involved in every aspect of the business and um, you know, really is important, not just to advance the industry and your profession, but also just to make sure that your business is benchmarked against other like-minded businesses and that you're really in the forefront of best practice um, you know, in the work that you do. Excellent, thanks, Mark. And I, I think it's also a testament to this idea of <clears throat> engaging um, in, a, in a course, picking up skills and qualifications and coming out the other side industry ready so it's not just theoretical. I mean, we, you know, we've already talked about the MYOB application, so using a real life accounting package. Then on the other side, obviously, getting familiar with the language, getting familiar with the people in the industry. And as you said, the trends and what's happening at that point in time. Yeah. As a student also, you quite often find employment opportunities that way as well. So it's, um, 
yeah, has lots of benefits. Well, yeah, definitely. And, 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 and networking is becoming a bigger and bigger thing, particularly about securing those roles. Now, we briefly touch on it, uh, but I'd like to dive a little bit deeper and talk about our learning material and draw a bit of emphasis to our webinars and our virtual classrooms. Iona, I'm going to hand on over to you. Okay, so um, in this course, we attempt to um, support the student in every aspect that we possibly can for them to be um, um, comfortable as they leave their course and feel capable and confident moving into or what, what, whatever work role it is that their aspirations um, lead them towards. So we provide all of the textbooks, all of the learner guides. Um, we provide all of the assessments. There's no additional cost for anything. We also provide um, video um, and live tutorials um, and tutorial notes and tutorial slides. Um, and students actually work um, with me actually um, and one of our other trainers um, every week uh, to explore different aspects of units. Uh, so there is actually dedicated time set aside so, uh, so um, our students can um, raise any issues that they need to raise. Um, we can explore different topics. Um, we can explore assessment tasks. But we also uh, take a deep dive into the things that we need to know. And then how to take the things that we need to know in, in, when we're working as an account, accountant or a bookkeeper and put that into practice in our jobs. So it's that deep dive and it's that exploration process as part of our live tutorials um, that we do every week. They're not pre-recorded, they're live. Um, no webinars, they're classes. Um, and, 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 it's, and that is where the real difference in this course is. Students um, will attend the tutorials, um, excuse me, from wherever they are. So there's no need to attend a classroom. Our classroom is an online classroom or a virtual classroom. Um, excuse me. <laughs> and depending on the unit of study, um, those tutorials could be either one to two hours e of it, um, each. Um, and they are cyclical. So students will attend three tutorials per unit um, over the duration of their course um, for each unit that they study. Okay, great. And then going back to where we looked at the course outline, that gives you a bit of an idea of the sort of number of units that um, you'd be required to complete. That's right. Excellent. Uh, now, and of course, another benefit is the uh, cohort. I mean, that ability to essentially make uh, classmates or whatever it may be along the way. Now, uh, we've got a couple of questions coming in and um, we'll put them, put them to the uh, subject matter experts right now. Um, the first is about our textbooks and workbooks. Now, how does that work, Iona? Okay, so a textbook contains all of your knowledge information. It, for example, I'll, I'll use um, creating um, financial reports. So your textbook tells you about um, how to create that financial report, where you draw all of the data from and the information from to actually put into your report, how you calculate it. And your workbook literally takes you through a series of um, self-directed activities and tutor-led and supported activities as well to actually help you develop the skill or support you, I apologise, to develop the skill to be actually, actually to be able to um, produce financial reports. So um, workbooks and textbooks um, go together. Um, one is about the knowing and the other one is about the doing, basically, James. Okay, excellent. Uh, next question. Um, now, the tutorials, okay, now um, they're live, all right, um, but kids' students watch the recordings at their own leisure, I suppose. They certainly can. Um, we don't actually take a role uh, for tutorial attendance or anything like that. So um, the tutorials occur on the same day every week um, for students um, as a matter of convenience. Uh, for the students so they're able to plan their time around their study. Um, excuse me. And recordings are made available within 24 hours of that of those tutorials um, occurring. 
So students can come back and watch those tutorials later on if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it, a, again, um, th this course is about um, supporting flexibility for um, busy people um, as well as people who um, are going through a number of different um, decisions in their life and maybe at different places in their career paths. So as much as we possibly can, we like to support um, as many different um, circumstances for students in their study as possible. So yeah, there are always there's always recordings um, of the of the tutorials and they're always distributed on the same day that the tu tutorials occur. Okay, great. Now, um, now, when we say no webinars, what we mean is like no pre-recorded webinars. There's a real emphasis on that live classroom tutorial aspect. Is that correct? Very much so. There is, um, there is recorded video um, in the course which relates to the knowledge, but the idea of the tutorials is to actually, again, um, explore um, the, the knowledge component or ex explore the concepts and explore um, the application of, you know, what we learn about in a particular area of the course in our day-to-day -day work. So we do that in a live, in a, in a live um, forum, whereas any anything that might be considered to be a webinar would be a pre-recorded video and it might be something like um, talking about tea accounts. Um, and, and ledgers and ledger adjustments and things like that. So it will be topic specific if it's a video. Okay, excellent. And um, with the accounting package that we've got my of, what are, what's the reasoning behind SAP's my of to have some alternate packages that are out there? Okay, so there's a number of different packages that we can um, we, we, we can utilise as accountants and bookkeepers. Um, MyOB actually makes a, um, a desktop version of their software available as a student version. So there's no additional cost to the student to study accounting and bookkeeping. Um, I'm aware that there's some you know, other options out there for students, but students will, um, if they take up those other options, will often end up incurring a cost per month for a subscription or something like that. By doing it this way and by utilising the exercises and, and the workbooks that we use in the course, um, then there is no additional cost to the student. So our, our goal is always to make our courses here at Mentor um, accessible and available for students in whatever context that they're studying in. So by utilising this version of um, the software rather than some of the other alternatives, we support that access and availability as well. Excellent, excellent. And, and, and finally, um, is there a requirement for any work experience throughout the duration of the course in order to obtain a qualification? No, not in our course. So students actually um, will utilise my old soft, their, their software all the way through the course. Um, the course is structured in such a way that they actually work with a company um, called Blogs, Blogs, in, Blogs Appliance Centre. So they work with Blogs Appliance Centre um, all right throughout the course and their capstone assessment or their final assessment is submitting a company file um, with all of the transactions that they've utilised and they've entered and they've practised all the way through their course. Um, so they demonstrate their proficiency with using the software and the functions of accounting and bookkeeping as they pass out of the course. Excellent, thank you. And, and of course, just one cl final clarification, just on the unit outline with respect to the electives, they're all included under the, I suppose, the entirety of the course and there's no additional charges or anything like that. No, there is not. Um, our course is as, a, as, as, a, as it's displayed on our website, excuse me, um, hidden things are, are, are not great for anybody. So um, we ensure that that doesn't occur with our courses. Um, the course is the number of units, the course is in the sequence that you see and, um, and, and the in, things that we include in the course and the experiences for the student are all based on self-directed learning um, and supported self-directed learning. So trainer-led um, experiences um, or educator-led experiences for our students in the course. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a break there, Iona, and hand on over to Mark um, to talk to us a little bit about the online learning experience. Now, 
Mentor has been around for what in excess of 17 years now and is focused initially on financial services and uh, certainly accounting for quite a number of years. And in that time, online learning has evolved in leaps and bounds, I'm sure. Um, talk to everybody out there a little bit about, I suppose, the online learning experience. Um, what are some of the requirements? What would it look like um, for anybody who's looking at taking on a course in, in this remote environment? Uh, thanks, James. Look, for, we've always focused on um, distance learning, online learning, with the ability to start at any time, um, ideally with the ability to work um, at times that suit you, because it's really appreciated that we're all, we require flexible work, the ability to um, start when we need to, um, you know, catch up when we have a bit of spare time, whether it be on public transport or in between different sessions. Um, but the main thing that we've always focused on is really good quality learning resources and support. Um, when you do look at the material, it needs to be um, easy to understand. Um, it needs to actually provide the material in a good format with um, great reference material, um, whether it be video or, or the like. Um, and equally, it needs to be supported. So when you do need additional assessment support, um, that's available to you. So they're the focuses. And I think, you know, I come from a, a background of, you know, working at KPMG and AD County, and I, I really wanted to make sure that the, the quality of the material was professional and easy to understand. Um, and, uh, and really just provides the flexibility that all learners have so they can fit it around their, their life, whether they're, um, you know, um, working flexible shifts or different times or working from home or whatever the situation might be. But um, when they've got free time or the time that they've allocated to study, that um, everything works to plan and that they can actually, you know, you know address the, the particular chapter or whatever the milestone that they're working towards might be. I mean, some people want to do the course quickly and they might allocate to try to do a you know, competency every fortnight, every month or whatever it might be. But other people um, might go through a busy period in their work and they need to have a bit of a break. And then, then when they've got some free time, they can actually then really um, address a number of units in a more you know, quick time. So um, we really just work on providing that flexibility and the support when you need it. Excellent. And what about accessibility, Mark? I mean, other than a good internet connection, um, laptop, smartphone, tablet, what's the recommendation there? Um, look, it, it's to it really work on any app application that you're used to, right? So, um, you know, you can be standing in a queue at the post office and you've got a spare 10 minutes and you could actually be listening to a, um, a, a video or a, um, a blog, or you could be, um, might be wanting to read something and to look at the application. But look, the ideal scenario is that you set up with a good internet connection and your um, uh, PC, you've got a bit of a quiet time and a quiet space. Look, everyone's a bit different for me personally. I try to get away and lock myself in a coffee shop, have a nice coffee, um, sit there and actually go through an, an hour or whatever it might be to actually knock off a, a particular piece of work. Um, but we've all got our own learning space um, that is most productive for us. Um, but in addition to that, I just want the accessibility to be able to respond when and, and as I need it. So it's been all designed to, to provide that opportunity. Excellent, thank you very much. Now, the slide uh, which we've all been waiting for and the assessment slide, and uh, <laughs> when you see it up here in front of you, quite often it, uh, it causes a little bit of student fear, uh, which is a term that I've coined. Uh, but I, I'm, it's probably best to um, hand on it over to you, being that you're one of the tutors and tutors and then lecturers um, and facilitators in this course, uh, to talk to us about these assessments. And um, the list really isn't as quite as scary as it looks, is it? Oh, it's far from as scary as it looks. You know, it, it does look like a very scary list, doesn't it? Throughout the course, because we look at different aspects of accounting and bookkeeping, and we look at different aspects of work and how we go about our work, um, and, and like all vocational um, uh, qualifications, um, the course is not just about knowing, but it's also about doing. So we, we, we utilise a number of different um, assessment methods in the course. Um, so no student would ever come across all of these in one single assessment. 
So um, multiple choice question, multiple choice quizzes are often used as a review. Um, so you get to the end of your, your, your unit and you might see a um, check your knowledge um, quiz. So you can check your own progress with your learning. Short answer questions, yes, they do appear in a number of assessments. Um, but, you know, um, short answer questions in our assessment process are also there as a, as a review process for the student as well. Case studies and scenarios, well, we utilise case studies and scenarios to um, encourage students to demonstrate um, to us or to explain to us or provide us with an example of what they would do in response to something that happened in an, in a work in a normal work day. Projects could contain everything from um, writing a procedure to creating a flow chart to um, maybe doing a research task and reporting about what you found, um, creating some example reports for specific uses, for example, portfolios are collections of documents that we then reflect on and we talk about the, the um, what we've put into our portfolio and how it relates to our workday. I can think of one assessment in particular where we ask students to find um, some examples of codes of practice and then we ask students to actually tell us what those codes of practice will mean to them in their working life as an accountant, as an accountant or a bookkeeper. Role plays, we don't utilise many role plays in this course but if a role play is utilised, it would be in a live tutorial session um, in a group situation where we might be pretending to be, um, one person might be pretending to be the bookkeeper and the other person might be pretending to be the bookkeeper's client, for example. So that's how we would utilise role plays and so on and so forth. So often students will come across two types of assessment, two types of assessment methods within an assessment, but it's really rare, James, that you would ever see any assessment that had all of these things in one. You know, we, we would never finish the assessment. Um, so, yeah, um, we would spend all of our time responding to one assessment instead of learning more in the next unit and in, in, in the next context in, that we were learning in about accounting. Excellent. So, so it's probably more of an indicator of the breadth of assessments across the whole course rather than uh, what one would expect in one particular unit. In so many ways. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, now, uh, course duration. Now, we've got up to two years, um, but is there any flexibility on that? I mean, could students move through it faster or, or, or perhaps even take more time if they wanted to? A lot of it depends on the student. You know, this is a, these course, and mentors courses are designed for people to be able to complete online in a self-directed way. Um, yes, of course, you know, there is the interaction with, with the tutor and um, an interaction with other real living, breathing, you know, class members in tutorials and things like that. But we often find for most students, four to six weeks um, is adequate to move through a unit of study. So as much as we say um, two years full time, it's up to two years full time. Some students complete this course in six months, but they work really hard and they do it full time and sit down and you know do 40 hours every week like a full time job. Other students do 10 to 15 hours, 15 to 20 hours um, and complete the course in six to nine months. So it's really, up, it's really all about how much time that a student can allocate to their study. Um, I will uh, say that we do have some other students who can only study one unit at a time and they have other challenges and it might take them longer. So there's always the opportunity to enrol part-time into one of our courses as well. And if students are wanting to, which extends their course duration by a year. Um, so if students are wanting to study part-time, we'd encourage them if they speak to one of our course advisors about doing the course to mention that. So they can actually plan that with um, our education advisors to um, just, just so we know that the student has the, the right type of study plan for what they want to achieve. Yeah. Um, excuse me, very important. Yeah, look, I think something that um, we often refer to is that life happens. So in the event that life does happen, um, you may need to amend your study plan on the fly and there's course that opportunity for students to do that 
And that's why they actually work with a dedicated educational advice consultant throughout their um, time at Mentor. And it could be with one you know, qualification or it could be with multiple qualifications, as is the case with a number of our lifelong learners. Now, Mark, student support, what options are available? Um, well, look, basically, the aim is really that you're not lost or stuck um, within your studies. So um, provided nine to five, Monday to Friday, um, we have a, a ticketing system and an email system so that um, we know exactly when you've you know, requested support. Um, we ask you at the end how you found the support, were you happy or not? So one of the things that's really important for us is that we actually measure your satisfaction at the end of the process. And um, you know, we're looking at it every, every day um, and we're pushing close to the 100% um, in most circumstances. Um, Support is, is a flexible thing. We obviously want you to be self-learning and the like. We're not there to uh, provide the answers for you, but we are there to make sure that you know where to find the information, um, that you can ask questions, that you're critically thinking, and that um, you know, we provide the assessment turnaround that's important for you. Excellent, thanks, Mark. And um, on that, if you could talk to us um, perhaps about some of the frequently asked questions that we get from students with respect to government funding, payment plans, um, all the things actually that we've got up there in front of us. Well, look, one of the most important things for us is our value of making our courses um, value for money. You know, it's not just the quality and the student experience, but the price point's important for us. Um, we want it to be of value. Um, we don't want them to, the course to be prohibitive. So we really want to make it accessible to everyone. Now, there are um, government loans that are available, um, but it's not something that we subscribe to because generally they're paid back over a long period of time and the actual total amount uh, with interest is quite expensive. We do offer payment plans, which is really the option for you to pay the course over a period of time. Um, but you'll find that all our courses are really quite affordable. Um, you know, they do pathway um, a lot of them into different programs. Um, when you finish the certificate four, then pathway to the diploma. But should you actually want to go on and do further study and do say a bachelor's program or even a, um, a master's program subsequently, a lot of our courses do provide credits to those courses and they are um, you know, really just a fraction of the equivalent units that you might get in those courses. Um, so we do have payment plan options. Um, you can start at any time, and that's part of our philosophy of just really giving you as much flexibility and control over the program as possible. Um, there are no extra fees. We actually, as I said earlier, it's really against our values to, um, to actually have additional fees and charges. So um, textbooks are included um, if they're required. Um, there's no extra assessment time. Um, and really, um, we, again, just to f do focus on that value for the money option. Um, should I hand it over to Iona now, James? Yeah, by all means. Um, now, I know, look, we, look, we certainly touched on everything being included. Um, what about the course being nationally recognised and students um, with respect to prerequisites or any prior study? I mean, is there anything that they need to have before they can enrol? Okay, I'll just touch on a couple of couple of things, not necessarily in sequence with this slide for everybody. Um, yes, the course is nationally recognised. Um, the certificate for accounting and bookkeeping is from the um, financial services of the FNS training package. Um, so it is nationally recognised. It's also recognised in um, a number of other contexts, um, not just here in Australia, but in other contexts as well. So um, it is a, a it is a um, a very worthwhile qualification to consider. Um, <coughs> are there prerequisites not for entry to the certificate for accounting and bookkeeping? We do suggest though that students um, should have completed a minimum of year ten um, and year and year ten um, math to actually be able to undertake some of the calculations but having said that we do support students to develop the knowledge um, in the unit perform financial calculations to be, um, be able to go ahead and um, do that um, part of the role of working as an accountant or a bookkeeper um, 
the um, fees which Mark mentioned um, on um, our website um, and um, there is a number of fees that um, could be charged but um, those fees and charges relate to course extensions for students whose courses for example have expired before they've completed. We don't charge for assessments at all um, and we would rarely charge for an extension for um, an assessment to um, as, as an extension of time to submit an, submit an assessment. We encourage all of our students to talk to us. Um, contact us via service, contact the education advisor that they, they, they've worked with to develop their um, education and training pathway to their, their aspired career and their career goals and their professional goals. Um, talk to us. Um, there is no challenge too great as far as um, our student support team are concerned um, and we have a number of students that um, exper have experienced a number of challenges in particular in the, in the last six months as well. So we've got support strategies in place and, um, and we, we actually like to work with our students to, to actually reach their, um, their, their aspired goals. Um, how long do people usually take to finish? Well, we, talk, we touched on that um, a few moments ago where um, on average it is around about um, 8 to 12 months or between 6 and 12 months. It depends on the amount of time that a student actually commits to their study. So on a full-time basis it will take most students around about 8 to 12 months to complete the course on a self-directed basis. Um, for students that do study part-time it could take up to 18 months to 2 years. So that flexibility is there, the portability is there. Um, the ability to study across you know, a number of your devices so you can do your reading on your smartphone or your tablet on the train and then go home and finish your assessments on, the, on, on your laptop. Um, is is one of the, the great things as far as study and flexibility is concerned. Is there any other questions I can assist everybody with, James? Uh, look, now we've just had a um, just a couple coming in. Um, the first one is uh, look, probably about um, industry opportunities and um, perhaps, you know, for late career changes and, I mean, age dependence and things like that. What sort of impact would that have on somebody who would be going for roles inside the, I suppose, accounting and bookkeeping industry? Look, I must say that um, one of the things that being able to do bookkeeping or, you know, undertake accounting tasks for um, people is uh, there, there's a whole range of different contexts that um, we can work in. Um, one of the, the great places that this course can actually take students to is um, not necessarily a course that's delivered by Mentor Education, but a course that's actually delivered by a number of other organisations, which is financial counselling. So um, students can actually complete our cert for and go on to do that type of course. And they'd be working in, for example, um, uh, community advice centres. So they might be supporting your know, older clients or clients with you know lots of life challenges to actually um, work um, with their, their their own um, life and their accounting and their their record keeping um, to support them for good outcomes. So that's just an example of where the certificate for an accounting and bookkeeping can take you. Um, as an older person, um, there is. Um, in my experience, um, I am a little bit older than I look. Um, in my experience, I, I tend to find that mature people that have completed accounting and bookkeeping courses are very, very good to work with in a, um, in a consultancy capacity. And um, a number of clients actually appreciate um, working with a bookkeeper who is more mature and stable um, because they, um, more mature people often will stay for longer periods of time. Um, they've really chosen this as something that they, they want to do and they focus on it and they, they have a lot of life knowledge that they bring with them as well. So I think there's a number of opportunities for people um, who um, are, are more mature to actually find some kind of um, stable opportunity that's um, out there. 
and it might might be simply finding a context to work in. Um, it might be approaching their local practice accountants and and starting relationships with them and working with them to work with older clients because often um, there is um, a little bit of reverse ageism that happens as well. So our younger clients are quite sure of our, you know, our, our older staff. So um, I'd suggest that um, there's a number of opportunities available and it's really what we make of it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, well, look, um, before we run out of time, because um, we're almost at the end, and I just want to uh, put a bit of a shout out to today's audience. Um, thank you so much. It's been a really, really engaging session. So thank you very much for your questions throughout. I've certainly enjoyed them, and I dare say our um, panel members and subject matter experts have as well. Uh, before I bring it to an end, Mark, are there any sort of closing comments or statements you'd like to leave people who are considering this particular qualification with? Look, I think the role of an accountant or bookkeeper is a trusted role, and it goes to Iona's point about you know, mature candidates as well. You know, you, you are a trusted advisor to a large extent in this particular role. You are looking for, uh, to make sure things are accurate. You're looking for perhaps um, even looking at the chart of accounts to make sure they're logical, um, whether you can divide things in a better way, whether you can uh, improve the reporting, um, you know, it really is the, um, the backbone of most organisations to have accurate figures in, at their fingertips, to be able to compare month on month, to know quickly whether um, debts are blowing out or whatever it might be, and, and to alert the appropriate people. So it's really at the centre of a small business. Um, and equally, in a larger organisation, everything is moving towards project work. Um, whether they be strategic initiatives or whatever they might be. They've all got budgets, um, you know, working to budget, things of that nature are really critical or even setting budgets or, or planning, um, just the component of operational plans and the like. It's um, the skill set, the accounting and bookkeeping skill set is really just fundamental in just about every aspect of business and work. Um, it's one that's increasing demand, they're great job opportunities um, and, um, it does have the flexibility that I only talked about earlier on. So um, it really is a, a great course and a great qualification and it sets itself up for the future of work. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. And Iona. Thank you, James. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, everyone, for attending. And I hope to see you in my tutorials. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. And um, before we close off, um, one last thing. For those who did attend tonight as a way to say thank you, um, we're actually making the live virtual tutorial um, courses available for those for uh, $1,100. Okay, so you can actually save um, over, just shy of a couple of hundred dollars actually. Um, but all you need to do is just mention to your dedicated course advisor um, that you attended tonight's webinar. And what we're able to do is um, make that special enrollment fee available to, um, for you. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all as students uh, very soon. As always, take an opportunity to excite your potential and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, James. Bye.